Thrivers. It's Rosanna with MindShift Thrive Global Ministries once again, back at it with another wonderful and fun episode. So when I say fun, what I mean is that we're going to be in a behind the scenes kind of special episode between myself and my music director, Mr. J. He's coming in right now to join us because we are working on... <laughs> hey, how are you, sweetie? <laughs> going on he's so much fun i just work here yeah stop <laughs> no he's family he's like my adopted son anywho so we are working on a biblical women series yeah. right so there's 13 women that i want to focus on in the bible who have been marginalized mm. and this is kind of like a an organic relaxed episode where we get to tap into some music mm. some worship and understand the story behind one of the women that we are going to dive deeper in in another episode at another time. But wanted to give you just kind of like a snippet of what our process looks like when we are coming up with a song. So, Well, usually Rosanna will be the one to write the lyrics. Um, I know you have like experience in poetry, so... I feel like that's usually where your writing comes from, um, and that's like your medium of like articulating like your thoughts, um, and then I'm usually the person that just like kind of organizes everything and makes it a bit more cohesive for something melodic like a song, uh, especially if, you know, I think we are both very... Um, interested in making stuff that other people can like listen to and enjoy and there are a lot of different genres uh for different people and a lot of new like popular music um that we all enjoy and i think we try to make music that just like aligns with that but in a way that is still like holy and still keeps god at the forefront and uh and healing at the forefront too yes um so yeah it it's it's always a fun process it's we always are like very silly and usually laughing and sometimes crying but that's okay too um <laughs> but um not because of each other <laughs> just to make it very clear yeah yeah um crying in the sense of uh joy gratitude and sometimes we have moments where we're vulnerable with each other we're doing life we're praying for each other. We're we're speaking life into each other as well, and we we well up with tears and and see what God is doing in the middle of it. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So today, um, we have a song about Fotina. Fotina. Yes. So this is part of our like our humor segment, right? <laughs> He's like, "Oh, what do you do? Tea with Fotina?" I'm like, "Yes! Oh my gosh! Thank you, Jay. That was amazing." So I'm gonna give him the credit. That's the reason why we have tea and sugar because it's like <laughs> it's so apropos. Tea with Fotina, right? Yeah. It's just a kind of like a little a little humor just to get us going. <laughs> which of course, that's, you know, God's all about laughing and having fun, and part of that's part of the healing journey. Ooh. Uh, us as survivors, I did handpick Fotina because she's very special to me as a survivor. She's one of those women in the Bible. Fotina happens to be uh, named, the. it's called the Enlightened One. And she comes from the New Testament in the book of John chapter 4. She's the woman at the well. And many of you know her as the woman at the well. She's a Samaritan woman. But some of you don't know that yeah, her didn't. name was Fotina, I never knew that. I didn't, <laughs> like, I didn't know either. Yeah. But when you start doing research and stuff, like mm -hmm. all this all of this starts coming out and I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, is this credible? Is it biblical? And absolutely it is. So awesome. in the Catholic Church, Eastern Orthodox tradition, they have her as a saint. So she's been venerated as a saint. Some of the, some of them would call her Saint Fotini or Saint Fotina. That's awesome. Yeah. I need to go to a well so I can be a saint. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a little bit more than that. Oh. Like she gave her life to Jesus, True. and there there are some stories about her. But we'll get into that in in our biblical series on uh, women that we can relate to as survivors. 
so without any further ado, I want to just kind of like introduce how we break it up into like the lyrics and the bars. And then he's actually right now he's working on it, yeah. um, working on the song. Yeah, I mean, I could even. So always got my little. Oh, I should show it here. My handy dandy phone. Mm -hmm. um, Rosanna will either send me a, a voice note or a note with all of the uh, words. So the first, let's look at like the first couple of lines. So all alone, it was about noon, walking to the well, humming the same tune. <laughs> I don't, don't even edit this part. Don't even edit. This is what we go through, okay? This is like this is a behind the scene episode. Okay. Do you hear a bulldozer in the background? It's definitely a chainsaw. Or a chainsaw. They're cutting down trees out there. Oh, yeah. you saw it? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness! So, Great timing. Um... An arborist? <laughs> yeah, no, no, wouldn't be an arborist. The arborist, the arborist would be the one telling the chainsaw guy, "Yeah, this one needs to come down, mm. or don't touch that one." Mm. I didn't. I did not know that. Anywho, yeah, I yeah. found out about this when you have so many trees in the backyard. You're like, oh, sure. um, I, I need to know which ones are dangerous because yeah. this one's like four feet away mm -hmm. from my house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think he's taking a break, so I'm going to continue. A shamed life, a wife to five men, didn't even matter. Could have been nine or ten. So, I hear that, and I kind of think about you know what the words are saying the context of everything um the mood that i guess like rosanna is trying to convey to everyone um and this just sounds like a woman that you know for all intents and purposes she's making her own choices she's living her own life she's doing whatever she feels that she wants to do um and we're getting like a personal because <laughs> no, this, no, this is raw footage this is what people have to go through no for real <laughs> this is why this is don't think this is easy it oh, yeah. it takes time it's cumbersome there's details mm -hmm. when there's no like especially when you're out in the, in nature yeah. and outside Absolutely. like filming these are the challenges for videographers and Absolutely. production staff. Absolutely. Um, and forgetting what you're saying is also <laughs> <laughs> is also something. But um, uh, oh, that the woman she's doing what she wants to do right, and right. It, like evoking that emotion into the song. And we're getting like a real personal look, like not even just like in her personal life, but even like following her to this well like you know it's we're like fly on the wall like bird's eye view of like what's happening mm -hmm. in her life mm -hmm. so with that i feel like i don't know i i would just play whatever i feel like makes me think about that when i find the pedal on the ground and i <laughs> do whatever i need to do um hmm All alone, it was all about me. Walking to the well, humming the same tune. A shame life, wife to five men. Didn't even matter, could have been nine or ten. And to her surprise, a Jew appeared, boldly reminding her that she'll just get thirsty again. This man knows her more than she knows herself, saying things she's only kept to herself, he says. What they have is not enough for you. What they have will never complete you. 
What you need is not five or six. You only need me. You only need me. What you need is not five or six. You only need me. You only need me. With wonder, she forgot what she came for. Left her water jar right there on the floor. Ran with tears of excitement on her face to tell of a prophet that spoke absent of disgrace. He knows her like he knows you better than you know you. And he says what he had is not enough for you what he gives will never complete you what you really need is me you only you only need me me You only need me yeah, that's, that's just how it goes That is so beautiful oh. I was, yeah, I was turning up a little bit there <clears throat> I'm glad we have this recorded Because this <laughs> <laughs> the, This is not like What's on the notes like a lot of it is but yes okay so yeah. to be genuine mm-hmm. there was this part in in the lyrics that's kind of corny <laughs> yeah. and, I, and i know he skipped it he skipped over it and this is why he's laughing because i'm like she's about to say. <laughs> <laughs> she has what you need is not kevin or steven what you really need is me and i get it like it's and i it's cool like you know like saying especially names are like more common for like those people that are like gonna connect with that and be like, oh my gosh, I'm with this man and his name is Kevin and I need to get out of here. Like, <laughs> or, like Steven is ruining my life right now. <laughs> like, this is the song is for me. Like, I like as much as I love that and I resonate with that, <laughs> and I'm sure other people will too. Like, I just try to think about like, well, you know, we want this to be like inclusive for like any woman that's like yes. listening to this and hearing this and you know can resonate with it that maybe doesn't have somebody named Kevin or Steven. <laughs> um. so okay to that note uh-huh. I was thinking of course you know it's mm. a universal song right yes right yeah so this woman at the well mm. she's had five husbands mm-hmm. and Jesus is like I know you I know what you've done mm. you don't need any of that you just need me I'm your living water right she had to show up at the well at noon mm-hmm. because typically women go in groups in the morning. Mm-hmm. So she's an outcast. Mm-hmm. And in a misog- wow. misogynist- misogynistic society, mm-hmm. she needed to be away from people in order not to be scorned, in yeah. order not to be um, shunned, yeah. right? Yeah. So she's like, if I'm alone, I can get this water and then just leave. Mm-hmm. So um, it resonated with me with the partners that I've had in the past and her feeling ashamed, alone, isolated, marginalized, all of that. Mm -hmm. Like as a survivor, you're hidden, you're isolated. You're never feeling like you're good enough. You're going to be judged. And the Samaritan woman speaks to all of those things. And for a lot of us, right? Um, And in writing the song, I'm like, oh, we have to pick modern names. (laughs) So like Kevin and Steven. You can't say Jehoshaphat. (laughs) It's not going to work. (laughs) It's not going to (laughs) work. And you can't say say (laughs) Fotina or Fotini unless you're like maybe in another country. It's possible. Mm -hmm, Somebody. mm -hmm. My last name is Filomena. And Mm -hmm. in Portuguese, it's PH, Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. I've actually seen it spelled PH. I'm Mm -hmm. like, oh, how weird. Mm -hmm. But that is a Sicilian last name. So it's not a common. So that's where he comes in, and he's like, Rosanna, let's reel you back in. (laughs) 
and he does tweak some of my uh, poetry, my lyrics, mm -hmm. because it needs to fit into the melody mm -hmm. and it needs to flow. Yeah. So one of the things that are very special to me is the rhythmic talents that he brings in with like his smooth R&B and it's very contemporary. Mm -hmm. And then when you match that in with the Bible, which is ancient and timeless, mm. like it's even better, mm. right? Absolutely. And it's not your typical Christian contemporary song, which I listen to all the time, but sometimes it's kind of like, can we switch it up a right. little bit? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And um, I, I love all different kinds of music. I'm very like well-versed in like classical jazz, R&B, um, electronic. I uh, just within my own experience as an artist, like I've dabbled in a lot of different things, and um, I've always uh, I was created to praise God. That's just that's just who I am. That's why I'm here. Oh, so you're versed in many genres. Yes. Right, and then right. that you were you were made to sing for the Lord as right. well. Right. Right. Yeah. So that. To be able to put all of that together and to be, you know, given the opportunity to do that through your ministry, which I'm very grateful for and thank you. Like I, because I honestly wouldn't even be doing any of this if I hadn't had met you. And Same I don't here. Know. Yeah. Same here. You know I don't that. Know if that would have been good for me, uh, especially like where I was at and the stuff I was making, the stuff I was doing. Um, it all just, it all works. It all just comes together it all does mm -hmm. yeah so this is pretty much like the dynamic he'll he'll sing a couple of bars or the, he'll go through the whole thing and i'll be like oh oh can you sing it again <laughs> and i'm like i know you admitted steven and kevin and that's okay because it actually sounds better than putting their names on there and shaming because we don't want to shame anybody right yeah, yeah. And, and then like me thinking about it now what mm -hmm. you've said i'm like yeah that makes a lot of sense because there's probably a lot of good kevin and stevens out there <laughs> i just thought about that yeah. and like we're just dumping those names yeah i i mean just, like carelessly because it rhymes so I'm coming from a rhyming right. writer yes, standpoint, yes, yes, and I'm yes. like, yeah, it's cool, but that's kind of corny at the same time. So I was at a crossroads. Okay, it's probably really corny, it's just, but it's just me, whatever. I flew the fifth. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he took it out for a reason, y'all. Obviously, he doesn't like it. He would have kept it if he did. <laughs> but, you know, this is where God works, yes, right? Absolutely. And he's like, all right, Rosanna, no, we're not doing that. We're going to keep it at. <laughs> so while you were singing, mm. I'm thinking as a writer, he needs to fill it in. It needs to be fuller. Mm. So, um, yeah, obviously this this is like the bare bones yeah. of the song. Yes. And the arranging. I literally just did this all on the I know, fly. I know. Yeah. And that's how we do it. Like, it didn't take me much to write that, right. and it didn't take you much to do that. It's my first time ever playing and reading those words simultaneously. <laughs> right. But, and that's literally, that's just, that's all God. Like, all of these melodies, um, just, like, being led on where to put my hands, like, that's not, there's a level of experience, you know, in my life that I've learned, like, um, and certain things that I like to do. Um, when I'm playing, but as far as like how to navigate through that, right? You know, that's not natural. That's all. That's all God. It's all God. Um, and turning it around for the survivors, it's a healing journey, and there's a big part of that is rediscovering or even starting to discover who you are. Yeah. And I'm pushing fifty, and I can tell you right now, it's never too late. For the first time in my life, I really know for sure it's confirmed that I'm walking in my purpose. And I knew I enjoyed music. I knew I enjoyed writing. I did some of it in the past. But to actually do it, do it now officially is just confirmation that God gives us abilities, talents, and skills yeah. that allows you to now be like, I think I need to do something with this. Mm -hmm. And that's why I want to invite you to start paying attention to the things that you like and don't like. And whatever it is that you like, hone it. Try to like refine it, even if it starts off as a hobby and you have a full time gig somewhere else. But start like opening up to the possibility that maybe God wants you to do something with something that just comes so naturally to you. And He's inviting you to 
to change the world with it. Change your own little world. You can start with your own family and friends, and then it just starts growing and growing abundantly to uh, to represent him in your personhood and to represent yourself in your new identity in Christ and as a survivor turning thriver. Yeah, just wanted to mention that. It's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it's you, usually what my mouthful. No, <laughs> you. That's that's literally it, though. I feel like also adversely like. Um, and this is just from my own experience, like someone that, as someone that has known their purpose, but has dealt with things that might have put them off track, Mm -hmm. you know, like there is redemption for you and you can return back to that state and even past that. Because the thing is, is like when you go through things coming from a place of having purpose and then you lose your way or you like don't really know like what direction you need to go next and then you're put back on the right path you have the experience of knowing like this is what I need to stay away from Mm -hmm. and this is what I need to you know this is what I need to focus on in myself and nourish within myself to make sure that I don't go back off track again and so you can stay within your purpose yeah so that's a great point because some people do know at an early age, mm-hmm. this is what I was born to do. Yeah. And they can lose their way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. You have all kinds of backgrounds and stories and walks. Mm-hmm. So I thank you for bringing up that point because there are a lot of survivors that lost themselves in these toxic relationships and they knew who they were, but then they they were lured in. Lured in. They were... Um, they were were romanticized so much and were promised and then it it fell short either too quickly or it took too long to say it's hard for me to get out and now that i'm out what do i do with this i feel alone or now i'm starting to regain my strength Mm -hmm. so um yeah it speaks to a little bit about everybody yeah Yeah, that's going through this i appreciate that and I'm glad this ministry is uh, a chance for you to get back into it. Like, well, I'm glad it's a chance for you to, you know, do what you do Appreciate here as you. well with Kevin and Steven. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, so or, I just thought about this. Can you sing Kevin and Steven? Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that one for you. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Let's see how it sounds. Because I, I, would, I would ask him to sing it anyway. <laughs> but then I'd be like, no, no, no. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> And he says what he has is not enough for you. What he gives will never complete you. What you need is not Kevin or Stephen. What you really need is me. Let's call it even. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, like... (laughs) Honestly, I didn't the way, even. The way you sing it sounds so good. Like you know how you know American Idol, and one of the judges will be like Simon will be like, you could sing the song, the the, the phone book, right? You know, yeah. that's how I feel with you. So talk to me, talk to them. What's going on? What were you gonna say? Oh no, I, I just like. I not only is that line like kind of corny. No offense, I know, but, like, I know it. I know it. Why don't you just say what it is? I don't get offended. You know I don't get offended. I know. <laughs> don't feel bad. It's also like rhythmically. Um, there's like maybe more like bars or like syllables. Okay. Um. So, it kind of just like overflows a bit. Mm-hmm. I like I could probably if I condensed certain words or if I like sped up certain phrases, I could probably fit it in. But like, I don't know if you or like anyone else like notice, like there are certain parts that like I'll sing the same along with like this pattern. So that's kind of like a chorus almost, or like something that, or a hook it would be called something that literally like hooks your mind like okay this part has happened more times than once got it so i'm gonna pay attention to this part and those are usually like a hook is like what gets somebody and then they're singing it 
All the time. All the time. Years later. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, um... Makes sense. You usually want those parts to be, like, both rhythmically and melodically, like, structured very similarly. Mm hmm So, this last part, there's, like, a lot of, like, words here, um, which is why I cut it down in, like, the original playing, but... Okay. Yeah. It's... Honestly, it's more for that than, like, the corniness. <laughs> it's not that corny. <laughs> but it... It really... It's it's probably going to be best if we omit specific names. Yeah. Let's just put it that way. Uh, it's fine. Nice. And uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I just thought it was like, "Oh, okay." Yeah, no. I get I get yeah. it. I yeah, get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. So, Maybe moving one day. forward with this song, do we need more lyrics? So, this is what we would do. I'd be like, "Do you need me to get in like a, a second verse?" I I don't even remember if we have two verses in I, there or not. I honestly I didn't even for this song. Mhm. Mm because you sent it to me in a voice note. Yeah. And usually with that, I guess, like, from my own experience, um, when I'm making music and I'm just, like, if I'm just sitting at the piano and I'm just playing around or whatever, um, and I'm recording a voice note, whenever I go back to it, I don't really, I don't really think of, like, a structure. I think of just, like, certain phrases that I want to... Mm like capitalize on the most or certain like melodic like like mel melodies that i want to like bring to light more mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but i kind of just let it flow like okay. i don't even think about it like first structures right okay i just let it flow because it's telling a story like right yeah it's telling a story mm -hmm. and we're not going too deep into theology because i don't want to lose the listener mm -hmm. but i want to give them an overarching right. message right. of what jesus has done for her right like she completely forgot mm -hmm. what she came for she yeah. just came to fill her bucket yeah. with water yeah and she's like, wait a minute, are you, you must be a prophet. Because, mm -hmm. like, nobody else would know this. And right. she was so excited. She dropped that that bucket, and she ran and told her entire town. Mm -hmm. And then they invited Jesus to stay there for, like, a couple days. And he's like, sure. The guy tells me everything that I ever did. And then he says, I know you're thirsty. And if I what I have, you'll never thirst again. I'm going. <laughs> like, I'm out. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't wasting no time. Right. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a it's it is a beautiful story. Yeah. So remember John chapter four if you ever want to read it. It's in the New Testament. It's a very short chapter. And if you have a study application Bible, it goes into depth mm -hmm. as to like who the Samaritans were, why is it that Jesus was there in the first place? Because it was a shortcut. He shouldn't he should have taken the longer route, mm -hmm. but uh he's Jesus. So he loves everyone. He wants everybody to to have salvation, sure. no matter who they are. For sure. And the, the history behind why uh, the Jews did not mingle with the Samaritans. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. He's, he's walking everywhere. And he's walking. <laughs> I'm taking the those, those three years, he just kept on walking. Well, he's just like, I'm burden, moving. My burden is real light right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not. <laughs> He's like, woman, if you only knew who I was, you would not be asking me. Sure. I would be, like, you would be asking me for water. That's what he said. Yeah. If you knew who I was, you would, I wouldn't have to ask you for water. You'd be asking me. And mm -hmm. I'm like, wow. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I would just advise the survivors, like, once they get into the word, just pause Think about it. If you don't understand, look it up. Take your time because it's better to really get it than just read through it, get the overarching message, and be on your way. Like, sink into it, meditate on it. If there's a song you want to sing that you want to hear in the background while you're reading, if that's the way you connect better with a story, do whatever um, God has you in that space to do because the more. Uh, different parts of the brain that you're using that lights up the more you're going to be able to recall this narrative in the future and you want to remember mm -hmm. these women that were marginalized that weren't so extraordinary that became saints like some of these women became saints and like whoa like rahab the prostitute mm -hmm. i mean she was celebrated in hebrews chapter 11 like in in the hall of faith and it just reassured me that there is no one 
that um, is omitted from salvation. There is no one that is outcasted in the name of Jesus. He loves all of us. He's, we're all made in his image. All right, Jay. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your talent. Thank you for having me continually. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And I can't wait for more projects because they're not going to stop. No, they're not. <laughs> as long as we are living and breathing, this is going to keep moving. Uh, yeah. No, <laughs> <laughs> no but I, I love it. I love it. I love it. And you don't just work here. I, okay. I receive it. All right. I receive right. it. Good, good, good. <laughs> so that was Tea Time with Fotina. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A little musical episode. It was heartfelt, heartwarming, uh, fun, inviting, teachable. So hopefully you were inspired. You were uh, moved by the message of Fotina, the woman at the well, in John chapter 4, with Jay's melodic, beautiful vocals in the background. We are still developing the song, working on it, work in progress, and this is a little behind-the-scenes moment that we wanted to invite you in. So remember, Thrivers, it's not just about living the day-to-day. It's about getting a second chance at life, life with love, love with hope and faith, and most of all, in community, that we are in it together. You're not alone. So with that being said, my name is Rosanna Novice. See you soon. Stay tuned till next time. Remember to keep thriving. God bless and stay safe. Mwah.